Okay. Uh, the last presentation was uh, a bit uh, interesting, and this will be very hard to understand. And so, I don't know how much it will be uh, relevant to some of you. But let's talk about so uh, oscilloscope. Uh, when you have uh, different uh, wave shapes, you can't measure it with just plain mul uh, multimeter. You have to measure it in visual way with uh, oscilloscope. And these are some uh, waves that you are going to see on your scope when measuring. And this is very hard to measure with multimeter. And you see there's bunch of stuff going on. There are some transients, unperfect waveforms, and two, two same waveforms shifted in time and by phase, and etc. And for all that stuff, you need oscilloscope. Uh, waveforms are very rarely sine wave or perfect square or perfect anything. Usually you get a bunch of uh, deformations or uh, noise or something not very ideal. This is not very ideal square wave. And this is one of the uh, most uh, prevalent uh, reasons to use uh, oscilloscopes to watch for very strange waves that are happening in electronics. Uh, there are two types of uh, oscilloscopes, analog and digital. Uh, did, and digital, they are DPO sampling, mixed domain. Uh, most modern and most expensive uh, di digital uh, oscilloscopes can show you both analog and both with digital waveforms and what's going so it's more of anal analyzer than just a scope but that's very advanced uh, we'll take a look at uh, analog uh, scope and all most of the functions are same for analog and digital and what's good uh, we can take a look at virtual oscilloscope and you can find it on that address it's free it's sort of a plug-in for uh, your browser and it represents some very real uh, analog oscilloscope with regular controls and I'll try to quickly just some some of the most basic controls to allow you to play with this thing. So, uh, you have to first power it on. That's a power button. Uh, on every uh, oscilloscope, you can change the intensity and focus of a beam that is going on on your display. Uh, trace means that you can, uh, because uh, trace is always uh, straight, you can change its angle if it's crooked. On some oscilloscopes you can find beam finder and scale illumination. Uh, scale illumination is how is uh, scale on your scale is that display here. Uh, how it's illuminated by backlight. Beam finder if your beam is somewhere outside uh, of your display you can find it uh, with this uh, button, there's no that button in this uh, virtual oscilloscope, but you can usually find it on some real scopes. Uh, this is two channel scope, so you can uh, watch simultaneously two uh, different waveforms. Uh, uh, you have two BNC inputs, like in real one. Uh, that's where your uh, probes will go in. Uh, there's a DC AC and uh, ground switch. Uh, what that means? Uh, depending on what uh, what you what you're going to measure, 
DC is for measuring DC voltages, AC for measuring AC voltages, and ground means uh, finding a reference. If you're ground your input, you can find where is zero level for your channel. And I'll show you why it's that important. Uh, in the middle, you get uh, buttons for uh, determining uh, what kind of display you're going to get. Uh, if you press first button, channel 2, you'll get display of voltage that is connected to right channel, channel 2. If you switch it off, you'll get just a left channel. You can uh, display both channels with dual, uh, and you can display the sum of these two channels with add function. In if you select both uh, buttons, you'll get uh, chopper mode when piece of uh, one uh, signal is displayed, then piece of other. Again, piece of one, piece of other. I'll show it to you that later. Most of the time, you are measuring with AC. And when measuring with AC, you can also measure DC voltage applied to AC voltage. Uh, first, horizontal. Uh, but let's take a break here. Uh, first, uh, I skipped a part uh, about um, theory, how this uh, oscilloscope works. Uh, but what you have to know, uh, the point on the display goes up and down with the change of, say, sine wave of the input. Uh, if you just apply sine wave to imp one input, what you're going to get, you're going to get a dot on the display that goes up and down depending on the uh, value of the amplitude of that sine wave. You get, won't get a picture of sine wave. You just get a momentary value of amplitude that goes up and down. You need a voltage that will spread this change over your uh, display. And it's uh, called time base. So, uh, this is the linear voltage generated by uh, the oscilloscope itself. And it spreads this change of one dot from left to right side of the display. If you uh, correctly set this uh, linear changing voltage, you'll get a nice sine wave on your display. Uh, maybe, okay. Uh, time division, uh, what's that for? Let's see. Uh, here's the si sign signal that we are measuring. And let's forget about controls. What we are, we are, what we are seeing is sine wave on your display. And how to determine What's the frequency and amplitude of this signal? As I said, if I don't have a time base, I'll, I won't get this sine wave. I'll get just one dot going up and down. Uh, if I get right time base, I'll get uh, this nice representation of sine wave. Uh, what's the frequency of this sine wave? Well, let's watch two dots when it starts to repeat. So you have one, two, three, four squares between uh, dots that, uh, dots that uh, represent uh, a full period, full time period of this signal. Uh, if we go back here, uh, time division determines uh, how much this one square in horizontal is valued. And that's the uh, speed of your time base. 
Here it's set uh, at two milliseconds. Here is an, at one, but this for this uh, wave it's two milliseconds. What that means? It means that your signal goes through four these squares for, and each square is two milliseconds. So this uh, signal uh, needs four times uh, two, eight milliseconds to do one full, evil, uh, uh, one full cycle. Uh, what's the frequency? Frequency is one uh, divided by uh, time, so it's one uh, divided by eight milliseconds. That's 1,000 divided by eight, and that's how much? What's 1,000 divided by eight? One, why 125? So, the frequency of this signal is 125 hertz. And that's what's determined by this control. You, uh, you control the value of this horizontal scale. If you set it to one millisecond, the, uh, the picture will stretch. The signal itself won't change, but you'll actually zoom the picture. Uh, so you can't change the signal with this oscilloscope. You can just change the way you look at the signal. You can zoom in or zoom out. Uh, there's a calibration also. For calibration, uh, that means that you can uh, have uh, some sort of zoom on some specific part of signal, but uh, if you turn it, you'll then lose your uh, calibration. Uh, it won't be any more one millisecond per, uh, per square. Uh, exposition, that means you can move this, you can move this signal left and right. So you can say, uh, uh, move these peaks on some places that you can easily uh, can uh, determine when it starts and when it finishes. So exposition moves left and right the whole signal. Uh, magnification 10 times will uh, put picture 10 times larger on your uh, display, meaning that some little changes in signal can be easily seen. Uh, what's the, so we determined the frequency of this signal. What's the amplitude? Uh, again, we count uh, uh, number of scale, uh, squ squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, squares for peak-to-peak -peak voltage. Amplitude is half of that, so amplitude is three squares. And at this control volts div, uh, it means how many volts you get per, uh, per one divide. Uh, you get half volt for one square. So amplitude is three times that. Amplitude is 1.5 volts of this if I change it to one volt, the picture will be squashed two times. It will sti still be 1.5 volts amplitude, but you'll actually do a zoom out. You get uh, two set of controls for this, meaning that you can uh, represent two separate uh, signals with single time base. You'll see that. So, this is the waveform we're, we're talking about. Uh, I al already explained it to you how we determine frequency and amplitude. Uh, this is where we uh, control uh, for both signals uh, volts div. Also, you can 
uncalibrated to watch some tiny uh, portions of it. Uh, y position means that you can move the position of a signal up and down. And if you look at, if you're looking at uh, two signals in the same time, you'll move one signal up, the other down, so you can see both in the same time. Invert means that you can invert the uh, input signal. Uh, and this is it. I'm looking at two signals at the same time. Signals have the same uh, frequency, but the amplitude is different. Why is that? Uh, both controls here are set at one volt per division. And you see that upper has one, two, three squares. That's half. First one is 1.5 volts in amplitude. Second one is one, two, three, four, four point four. So uh, second one has uh, 2.1 volts amplitude. With this Y position for left and right channels, I can determine and move positions of these two signals so I can watch them in the same time. Uh, triggering. Uh, triggering is something very tricky to explain, but actually to have a steady picture on the display, you have to, uh, uh, to make a, a synchronizing signal with the input signal. Uh, if there's no synchronization between input signal and uh, oscilloscope itself, the picture will travel from left to right. And there are many uh, ways to control that trigger. Uh, most of the time you will control this trigger level and you can set it to work AT automatically or normal. Normal means you control it with uh, manually. Uh, you, you can change it until the picture is steadied. Uh, here you control types of synchronization. If you don't know what's that for, don't bother. Uh, you can uh, synchronize it to some standard TV voltages. That's not very interesting, but you can synchronize it to AC voltage, DC voltage, uh, high and low filtered uh, voltages and to AC mains at the input and also you can uh, invert the triggering signal. Uh, you can delay that triggering signal so the, trigger, uh, the triggering is a bit later than uh, the signal itself and you have also the external input for triggering if you want to uh, signal be synchronized to some other external voltage. Anyway, you most of the time use just this level. When you're measuring some signal, like this one, if you want it to be uh, steady on the display, just move a trigger, and what trigger does is changes the level up and down, and when it finds something to be triggered, like this value of sine wave, it will synchronize and put a steady picture on it. Uh, calibration. Uh, if you have played with this red uh, meters, pot potential meters, uh, you uncalibrated the oscilloscope. To calibrate it again, you connect your probe to uh, 0.5 or uh, 0.2 or 2 volts square and you can then scale it back to the calibration. You know that this output is 2 volts square wave and you set your controls so it can represent just that wave. Uh, X, Y mode. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain, but uh, in this mode you're actually uh, representing uh, two signals and how they depend between each other. There's no time on X uh, scale, 
rather one uh, on y scale is one input on x scale is other input so you won't get this type of representation why because on the x scale is time if i now put this second uh, waveform on the x scale i'll get a circle what that means it's lissajou uh, figures and they represent uh, phase and frequency uh, between two signals. Uh, uh, circle means that these two, uh, this, these two uh, signals are the same frequency and if it's flat it means they're in perfect synchronization meaning there's no time delay, time shift between these two. Now, if I look at these two signals uh, this signal up, upper is actually the same signal as upper signal in here but what, what's changed? Changed is volts div it used to be uh, 0.5 now it's 1 uh, and I changed from 2 to 1 millisecond time, uh, time division or time scale so now I get stretching of the signal and other signal now is different frequency. If you get different frequency signals in XY mode, you get something like this. And what it shows that if you look, look outside dots, you get three dots in uh, Y scale and two dots in X scale. Uh, that means that frequencies of those two signals are uh, 2 to 3 sc scale ratio. And there's a short preview of these things. So, uh, you get perfect circle for 1 to 1 scale ratio. Uh, if you get this type of uh, figures in XY mode for 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to two, 4 frequency ratios. Uh, probes that you're going to use uh, for uh, measuring are something like this. Uh, they usually have switches 1, 10 and 100, meaning that they can uh, scale down the input voltage 1, 10 or 100 times and it's useful for uh, measuring high voltages. So if you're measuring say 1000 volts this high voltage probe will scale it down to just 0 to 10 volts because uh, oscilloscopes have, have a very limited input range up to 5 or 10 volts. Uh, those are passive probes. Active probes can amplify small signals 10 or 100 times. Differential probes uh, actually measure signal between two points, not between uh, ground and uh, output. Uh, this clip is where the grounding goes on your circuit. And you touch this point to the point where you're going to make a measure. There's also small trimmer on the probe usually you don't have to mess with it but if you're watching some square signals you'll see that if it's not trimmed right you'll get not perfect square rather some filtered uh, square so you have to uh, set it to get the best response for your measurement this is very complicated scheme how this thing should be working what you have to see is that this is that time base La uh, linear voltage that is generated that puts that dot that makes sine wave from left to right on your display and this is the input this is the switch that determines what you are going to measure AC or DC voltages uh, this is why it's important to have oscilloscope uh, 
this very ugly uh, picture is how AC mains affect audio signal. You have to have, you expect to have some uh, perfect high frequency audio up to 20 kilohertz, but that's this tiny sine wave. These big sine waves are just a hum of 50 hertz or 60 hertz mains. Uh, also, you d uh, in this example, you don't get a perfect sine wave. You get it modulated by some low frequency uh, signal. High, s high frequency signal is hidden in this uh, trace. You can't see it. But you expect to be flat. Actually, it's amplitude modulated by some low frequency signal. And that's very hard to determine without oscilloscope. Uh, this is a magnification of that 5 volt USB voltage. You expect to have flat line of 5 volts. Well, it's not flat. It's fluctuating in time, but we are, uh, th this fluctuation is several microvolts or millivolts, and also you have some high frequency superimposed on it, and that uh, high frequency comes from switching of internal electronics in power supply of your uh, computer. So it's not perfect 5 volts and it's not flat. There's a bunch of stuff going on in there. Uh, 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 di digital to analog converters are considered perfect. Well, they are not. Uh, this one should produce perfect si sine, wa sine wave and it's not producing perfect sine wave. Actually, it has some uh, bad filtration to it, and uh, it's just a uh, rather harsh uh, approximation of sine wave. Uh, when looking at square waves, you see that there's some ringing at the beginning and ending of uh, transition at square waves, and sometimes these ringing uh, oscillations can cause very uh, bad stuff to your electronics. And this is typical for audio signals. You want perfect sine wave uh, on your output, but you get some clipping, unwanted clipping of part of your sine wave, and that's not good. So this is the input, and the output is just clipped from the upper side, and on this example on the right, clipping is both up and down, and that's very bad. You see it's speaker out. You, you want perfect sound wa sine wave, and for some reason, probably because the power amplifier is at its maximum output, it's getting some clipping. And um, also, you get some um, uh, transients. You can look at uh, uh, signals uh, how uh, how some circuits respond to some input signals uh, and how fast they change their output state and that's it for today thank you